I'm Dr. Jen with White Wave Body Work, and in this video what I want to go over is a side-lying straight leg raise with rotation of the hip. So what I want you to do is lie down on your side and try to get into a comfortable position with your arm and hand where you feel like your head's not way cocked up to the side um, and it's not hanging down nice and low. For me, I like to rest my head on my forearm, but you can obviously use a pillow, whatever feels comfortable to you. For the bottom leg, we're going to bend it to a place where we feel like we're stable when we lift the upper leg because this is the position we're going to end up in and not have to be like balancing ourselves and what i want you to do is not use your hand for balance i want you to use your core for that stability so get into a place with your lower leg that feels comfortable for your hip and that feels comfortable for balance all right then mark it where the top leg hits the bottom leg when you feel like you're in a straight line and i mean straight line by not a hinge at the hip so it's like you're kicking your leg back and you're thinking as you're lifting and lowering you're in this straight line the biggest um, compensation i see people make in this exercise is that they rock the top hip back and bring this leg forward so essentially we're working more hip flexor than glute mean what we want to be doing is really working on that lateral hip musculature not necessarily the hip flexor so Keep your hips stacked up on top of each other and keep this leg back. Now from here, it's different than the normal straight leg raise because we're rotating up on the up and down on the down. So rotate your toes up while you're lifting, rotate your toes down while you're lowering. All right, let's talk about the rib cage. So as we're stacking up here, a lot of times people are trying to get that leg back by letting the ribs flay forward. So tack the front ribs back and try to think about the rib cage and the pelvis lining up as well as the leg. So you're kicking your leg back as far as you feel like you can go without splaying the ribs forward and making the upper abdominals not active. So we're gonna try to pull the front ribs back in line with the pelvis and kick the leg back as we're lifting and lowering. All right, let's put it all together with the breath. We're gonna exhale on a lift, so take a nice inhale. Exhale, lift, rotate the leg up towards the ceiling, pull the belly button in, pull the pelvic floor up and in, that's that Kegel activity. Inhale, rotate the foot down and lower. Let everything relax in the belly. Exhale, rotate up, lift, pull the belly button in, pelvic floor up and in. Inhale, come back down. So if all that feels like it's way too much to coordinate all at once, in one smooth activity. You might want to go back to my other videos where I talk about breathing and pulling the belly button in. That's the transverse activation or transverse abdominus activation, I'm sorry, and pelvic floor activation before coordinating it with movement because it is a lot all at once. So once more, we're going to exhale, lift, inhale to lower. Every time we exhale, we pull the belly button in, pelvic floor up and in. Every time we inhale, we relax the pelvic floor and fill up. The rotation of the hip is fairly small, so toes up, toes down, doesn't have to be toes way up, leg way up, toes way down, leg way down, because that really rocks the hip. So you only want to go as far as you feel like you can without rocking the hip back and forth. And sometimes that motion is fairly small, and that's fine. So try that out. Let me know what you think of it. It's a lot harder in terms of like how quickly you fatigue than just a regular sideline straight leg raise. So let me know what you thought in the comment section below and I hope you learned something good. Thanks for watching.